Hello, my name is Seth Mitchell. I'll be walking you through my portfolio project. Uh, it is designed to allow you to add in stocks, ETFs, and mutual funds that you own, and from a dashboard track a gain or loss for a day, as well as easily view top movers and losers. I'm planning on showing you a walkthrough of the user experience from sign up uh, through creating your portfolio and then monitoring that. Currently, I don't have the sign up uh, fully enabled yet with the forms and submitting data to the server. I will show you the screens uh, and walk you through that process and then we'll get into the app. This first screen comes after the loading splash screen of the app. Uh, pretty straightforward, allowing you to either sign up uh, if you don't have an account or if you do, a uh, quick link to allow you to sign in with your credentials. Moving to the next screen, we have create an account, which right now will just require first and last name, email address, and a password. I would also like to add a, prof a profile picture. Uh, this is planned to be added later on. And lastly, once you've submitted, you'll get a confirmation and allow to get started to bring you into the app. This will be initially an empty dashboard. Uh, I've temporarily hard-coded this information in just to show you the different sections. So starting from the top, we have gain loss. This is what the biggest piece that you'll be coming to the app to monitor day to day. This is gonna show a gain or a loss based on your portfolio and the stock's movement for that day. Next section is top movers. So these will be top three best performers for the day. And on the opposite end of that, top losers. So the bottom three performers for the day. And lastly, today's news, which will allow you to get a few stories that are relevant to your holdings. Getting into the main section of the app, uh, we'll go into this middle tab, the little safe icon. Here we'll be brought to our portfolio screen. I've already added a couple in just so we can view that right off the bat. Um, this is going to be broken up into different subsections based on what type of holding it is, either a stock, ETF, or mutual fund. Um, from this list, this is a scroll view, so if we do get more, you'll be able to scroll through that. Um, in this bar, it'll show the ticker symbol, the number of shares that you hold. Clicking on this arrow will drop down to a control panel. It will give us some more information. So here we can see the current share value and total position. So this is basically just doing a multiplication of the current share price times the number of shares that you have. And underneath the actions menu, we have two buttons one with three dots, that's going to allow for any edits. Clicking on that, currently the ability to edit your position is coming soon. I don't have this endpoint hooked up yet. Um, that's something that will be coming. Um, this is just, a, I think, an iOS error. It's giving me this yellow tint. Um, and then lastly, we have the delete control, but we'll get to that in just a second. And getting started with adding some data in, starting from the portfolio screen, we'll come up to the top and click this plus button to bring us into our add new form. Starting from the top with position type, clicking this drop down will show us these three categories that I was referring to before. Uh, selecting one of these will then filter into our list when we actually save the position. So we'll select stock here. And sorry about this, this is that iOS issue I was talking about. Here we will add in our ticker symbol. This is for Tesla. And we'll add in a number of shares. And as soon as you click off, it'll automatically do the calculation to give you an estimated value. And once you're all set, we can click Add to Portfolio. It'll give us an alert uh, that the, with the position type, the symbol, and the number of shares. And then we'll click OK and then it will populate in the list here. And now that we've added that item, here we'll be able to click our dropdowns and see that applicable information. It pulls the current share price and does the multiplication for us. Now if we wanted to delete one of these, we would go to our dropdown and click on that action item for delete. Once we do, it says your Boeing position has been deleted. We'll click OK and then it becomes removed. Now that we've seen how that sort of operates on the front end, 
I'll start to walk you through the code and, and how it all comes together. So starting from the back end with the endpoints, um, I wanted to create uh, the position router uh, and the position uh, schema that will take the data from the add new form. So the position type, the symbol input, and the number of shares. And when that is posted, I want to that to uh, get pushed to the MongoDB Atlas uh, database and console log position created and with that position. And looking at the add new component, here we'll see that we have a few different things. One, we have the symbol call that is going to get the price information uh, and the symbol lookup that we input here. And from there, it will use this URL uh, as our database. And moving down with our Axios uh, method, we're going to push it to that endpoint that we created through a post. And that payload that we created are basically our three input fields here. And then we want to get a log just as a confirmation and if there are any errors to catch. And we'll also uh, do a uh, handle submit method from the button that is going to log all that information so we can see it as well. And just for now, an alert uh, so we can see it visually on the screen too. And to see it all work behind the scenes, uh, let's go ahead and show you the actual database on Atlas. So right now, this is a collection for positions. Right now, uh, we only have the two stocks in place, so Apple and Tesla. Um, here, let's go ahead and add a stock. Let's add Boeing back, and we'll make that 12 shares and add to portfolio and we'll click OK here. We can see in our console that we have all that information. We have the current price, the number of shares, and then the console log and the alert that we had set up. Now if we come over to Atlas and we refresh this page, then it will show up there with a custom object ID as well as timestamps. While there were a ton of challenges that I had while moving throughout it, like uh, styling, challenges with support for iOS, navigation challenges with the tab navigation and the stack navigation for the different screens, I want to talk mostly about the data manipulation since that really is what brings this app to life. Um, initially, uh, a big win for me was getting the API to work and actually seeing livestock data feed into the UI on the screen. Uh, once I started to implement uh, MongoDB and Atlas, that's when things really started to get difficult with actually storing the information and needing to pull it back down in order to view on different components. Um, through this, I did a lot of work with learning React hooks, uh, being able to use functional components instead of class components and using state and manipulating it that way. Uh, that was a big breakthrough that allowed me to really start to load content into this portfolio view. Um, I'm looking forward to continue working with uh, these different endpoints and manipulating data. I want to finish out the edit option uh, as well as begin to bring things over and content into the today view to really bring this app to life. And that is about all I have time to show you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed looking through the project with me and I'm excited to share uh, future developments as I continue working on it. Thank you.